Yeah, that's right. The performance is not something that I think any TRX owner will complain about. That's kind of why you buy a TRX. It's because of the Hemi that's sitting under the hood and it does a great job. But that is 90% of what you're paying for when you buy a TRX. It, it's the Hemi underneath the hood, the supercharged Hemi that is, a 6.2 liter V8, because uh, Dodge, they definitely make you pay if you want you know, the creature comforts and the nice features and so on, compared to, at least for me, who's owned a bunch of Fords and we still have a Gen 3 Raptor and so on, compared to Ford when it comes to creature comforts. <laughs> you gotta pay a lot more with the Ram. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some things that I have learned to hate. Hate is still a strong word. I mean, I love the truck, it's awesome. But there, there's a, a couple things um, that just leaves me scratching my head. Like, they really make you pay to get features that you've been used to for, I don't know, five, six, seven years. So here are uh, the things I hate the most about my Ram TRX. So, um, a Ram in general, but Specifically, a Ram TRX comes in different trim levels like, you know, most brand of vehicles and trucks do. What I have is a uh, TR1 package. So this is one step above the base uh, model Ram TRX. And my truck, uh, and we're going to focus here on, you know, the actual sticker price is $82,265. Although I had to pay more than that for the truck uh, in the use car market because of the crazy market. You guys get it. Now I can make this negative list pretty long if we went feature to feature and name those as one thing, but I'm not gonna do that. So we're just gonna put all the technical features into one category. Uh, and we'll start here with the key or the fob. This is uh, the key fob that you get with a Ram TRX and we have the lock, unlock button, lock button, uh, remote start, and thank God that it has that. And then obviously the uh, panic button right here. But with most people <laughs> who buy a vehicle nowadays, whether it's a truck or just a regular car or freaking Honda or whatever, when you have a fob, you stick it in your pocket and you're used to just being able to walk up to the truck and uh, you just put your hand on the door handle and open. No, nope, you can't do that on a Ram TRX with the TR1 package. It's not even a base model. It's a one step up. It's like the, the, the mid grade. You don't have a proximity key. I think they call it. Um, you have to unlock it manually. And to me, I mean, this is just absolutely nutty. This is a 2022 model truck that costs $82,200, brand new, and I have to jump up even way more in price to get that feature right there. And I know this is extreme first world problems, like what the hell, but when you're paying that kind of money, I paid 92 grand for this truck. I have to unlock it manually. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's absolutely insane. Now, is it like a big freaking problem and I can't? No, of course not. But, you know, I mean, my, my previous truck that was a 2021 is a Ford F-150 Lariat, uh, which stickered at like 63,000, had that and a lot more. Now, granted, it didn't have a Hemi engine under the hood. Now, since 2018, in the United States, it's been a, a federal, like, nationwide law that every vehicle uh, that is made and uh, you know whether it's coming from Europe or made in the USA or whatever uh, a brand new vehicle has to be equipped with a backup camera and of course the Ram has a backup camera but when you're backing up for $82,265 you do not get backup sensors and uh, I, I'm unsure but I'm, I'm I'm, I'm assuming that if you jump up to the TR2 package, you get backup sensors. And obviously you're, you're paying even more money for the TR2 package uh, and to get backup sensors. You don't get it on the TR1 package. Now, we're gonna keep talking about uh, the camera. Like you guys can see, it has a backup camera. And again, if we're gonna compare this to what I traded in for this truck right here, which was a 2021 Ford F-150 Lariat. So a Lariat is, you know, slightly above mid-range. But with that truck, I had a front camera as well, like a 360 camera which is just great because it, it was lifted kind of same size, maybe not width wise, but pretty much same size height wise. This is a big truck. So when you're parking in tight spots and stuff and 
you know, whatever. It's nice to have a 360 camera. And again, I get it. It's just one of those first world things that you get used to. But with a Ram TRX for $82,265, you don't get that either. And then we're gonna jump back inside the truck. Part of the tier one package. <laughs> I love that sound is that you do get heated seats and a heated steering wheel. Great, especially for me who lives up in the north when winter comes, it's great to have heated seats and a heated steering wheel. And what you don't get in a TR1 package, Ram TRX for $82,265, is cooled seats or ventilated seats. No cooled seats in the Ram TRX TR1 package. You have to, of course, jump up you guessed it, to the TR2 package, to pay even more money. No! And of course, I forgot to mention, I did have that in my Lariat F-150. I did have cooled seats there as well. And yes, it, it, it's not a TRX. It did not have the Hemi, although I did supercharge it. Um, but it was $63,000 sticker price, and I had all those features. So as we're trying to speed this up here, I know I'm bitching uh, a lot. <laughs> when it comes to the technical features, there there are a lot of technical features that I don't like, like lane keep assist and stuff like that. I don't like that. I don't have that on this truck, so obviously I'm not missing it. You have to, again, jump up to a TR2 package to get that. What I do have, though, is, you know, rain sensing wipers. Sure, I mean, I guess they're okay, whatever. It's not something I really need either, but that, for some reason, is part of the TR1 package. I wish they could, like, switch that out for ventilated seats. That's a quick side note here as I'm harping on the Ram a lot currently in this video and comparing it to the Ford and so on. The Ram doesn't have an aluminum body that Ford is extremely proud of because it brings down the weight of the truck and so on. But even though it doesn't have an aluminum body and uh, the tailgate, this is an assisted tailgate which we do not have on our Raptor for instance and this thing I mean, I could probably, yeah, lift this with one finger. It is so much lighter than it is on any of the aluminum body Fords that I've had. So, that, I mean, just small things, good on Ram for doing that. So I'm just like throwing in quick little bones here for the Ram. I don't hate the Ram. It's just like things that annoy me with this truck when it comes to the features. And I think we're done with the whole feature part. And the next thing that we're gonna talk about is even more, I think, <laughs> of first world problem but it's extremely annoying so bear with me i know a lot of ram owners can attest to this because i think it's a somewhat common thing and that is the thermometer for the outside temperature that you see in most vehicles nowadays it says 63 and i've been driving it around for a while now and i think this might actually be correct yeah because after a while it does update pretty good but it takes a while like I'm talking maybe sometimes up to half an hour, especially if it's really warm outside. So right now it's only off by three degrees. And by this footage that you guys are seeing right here, uh, from earlier this morning when I just got in the truck, um, it was off by way more. And now we're having like a fall day where temperatures are really dropping. We're almost into October here. But during the summertime, uh, these outside temperature gauges are way off. I mean, I can get in the truck when it's a hot day outside. Maybe it's like it's 95 and this thing will say like 123. I don't know exactly where the thermometer is located but it's always like off and it takes a long time for this thing to like really update so every time i'm looking at it it just annoys me because i know that it's wrong so i feel like why is it even there if it's not giving you the correct temperature that thing sucks now initially when i bought the truck uh the raptor r hadn't been announced yet so you know i was doing my comparisons uh of this truck to the gen 3 raptor that we have sitting in the driveway as well that's the new raptor by the way, the latest one from, from the latest generation from Ford. And we have a fully loaded one. It's an 801 package. Now granted, in a Raptor, you don't get a 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi. You get a boring EcoBoost V6. Although it, that is a great engine as well. But when it comes to a truck like this, you guys get it. I mean, you want a big V8. This is how it is. Which is what Ford has now finally done. They're coming out with the Raptor R, which is a 5.2 liter supercharged V8. And, uh, you know, the whole pricing thing that you have to pay so much for a ram kind of goes down the toilet because for the raptor r and i, I guess it maybe i don't know if it's going to be more limited than an actual trx but that pricing starts at 109 and it ends at like 
110 something because the only options you have in a Raptor R is the exterior color and you know panoramic moonroof or no panoramic moonroof and yeah you're paying even more <laughs> I think Ford is doing that because of it's the last two raw when it comes to big cool you know internal combustion engine trucks from Ford so yeah uh, you do pay a lot for features in a Ram TRX but once the Raptor R comes out it's actually pretty cheap <laughs> unless Ram TRX comes out with some like you know red eye Hellcat truck wide body whatever something something they're probably charge even more than the Raptor R but yeah you guys get my point you understand where I'm coming from here initially when I bought the truck I'm like damn they make you pay for like having freaking backup sensors you gotta pay even more money it's insane now there's one more thing here uh, before we actually talk about some uh, positive stuff with the Ram here that I hate about this truck is I don't hate it I, I, I don't but it's annoying and it's happened so many times and it only happens during the summer obviously when it's really hot outside and you always wear a t-shirt when you uh, step up <laughs> to a tier one package you don't have a completely base TRX you get this cool little plaque here it has the VIN number you know the PSI the motor supercharger and, and so on it says TRX it's pretty cool but the amount of times that I've burnt myself on this thing this thing gets like a thousand degrees hot and the truck is sitting in the driveway or whatever the Sun is just gazing on it all day long this thing I mean I'm telling you it gets stupid hot and I've burnt myself on it so many times so I've always thought that maybe they could have uh, put that somewhere else maybe like a cool spot like I don't know somewhere on the dashboard whatever you burn yourself on this thing all the time and again I know I, I know it's it's a freaking whiny thing to bring up it's very first world problem but it's annoying as hell now one thing uh, that I was complaining about a little bit in the beginning because I was trying to get this truck under 60 in four seconds as I was trying to get this truck under 60 in four seconds <laughs> yeah that's obviously 260 under four seconds which I know people have done even with uh, you know bigger tires like 37s and so on they've gotten this truck to uh, 60 miles an hour in under four seconds and I haven't managed to do it on video but I did however manage to do it on the way here uh, I took a picture of it once I saw it up on the screen so we actually we're gonna try to do this one more time and get it on video <laughs> Now I'm 220 pounds. We almost have a full tank of gas. And uh, we're gonna do this uh, zero to 60 run one more time here and see if we can get it under four seconds on camera. So what I've noticed is that launch control doesn't, at least not for me, it doesn't work very well. So what I do now is keep it in Baja like we mentioned earlier, just brake boost a little bit and then just freaking go for it. We still made us do it though. <laughs> Look at that. 3.9 seconds, baby. Hell yeah. Three point nine again. Uh yeah, maybe that is my cap for at least me being in the truck. But either way, I mean 3.9 seconds zero to 60 is not something you can do in any Raptor, at least not when it's stock. So obviously I love the performance. I love the Hemi. That's why I bought the truck. I'm bitching about, you know, how much it costs, but you know, it just, it, it is what it is. TRX is the number one truck on the market right now, in my opinion, I, and I own number one and two. They're both sitting in the driveway. I like this one the best just because it, I don't know, it just suits me. It's more me. The Raptor might be a better riding truck. It might be better off-road and so on, but the, the Ram is just, look at it. It's so mean looking. And if this is the first video you're watching on my channel, this is a 2022 Ram TRX. We've wrapped it in Expel Stealth. So it's like a satin matte black. We also bought some uh, fuel rebels for it. Uh, they're 20 by 10s, I think it is. I forget. Uh, they're sitting on 1350 wides, 35 inch Nitto Ridge grapplers. Got some Hellcat badge and replaced the Ram uh, badging with that. Also did the TRX here on the bedside. It's a black on black theme if you haven't noticed yet. 
Um, we also have a Corsa exhaust. I love this exhaust. Makes the truck open up a, a bit more. It's not the most aggressive one that you can get from Corsa, but the truck sounds so much better. But I think that's going to wrap it up for today's upload. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you're a Ram TRX owner yourself, uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you think of your, I mean, when it comes to the negative sides of the truck. Do you guys agree with what I said? Or are there other things? Or should I just not even make a video like this? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, whether you own a TRX or not. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Now, by the way, I didn't mention the fuel economy, which I believe that you shouldn't even mention in videos like this because it is what it is. It's a big, heavy truck. You get a Hemi V8 with a supercharger, but yeah, fuel economy on average is 10 miles to the gallon.